I'm creating this video because I think it would have been helpful for me when I was researching opportunities after bedside, researching informatics, and also researching how to get into informatics as a nurse who hasn't spent uh, like a number of 10 or 15 years within an acute care setting. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Brianna. For those of you who do not know me and maybe this is the first episode that you're watching, I'm a registered nurse doing my thing away from the bedside and pursuing the field of healthcare informatics. In today's video, I wanted to talk about my first informatics related job, what that looked like, what my title was, how much I got paid, what I liked about it, give, just to give you guys a general picture of, I guess, what this job looked like, just to see if, you know, it's something that would pique your interest in informatics or maybe even give you like a clearer picture of what that may look like based on my background of nursing. Okay, so this job opportunity came around during COVID time. I was one of the nurses who was taking opportunities of the different contracts to give vaccines, to do COVID screening. You guys remember when, you know, there were all kinds of contracts, travel contracts, just to like vaccinate and screen people. Um, so that's what I was doing for like half a year, almost a year. Um, and then I began this job as a nurse contractor so that's what the job description that I signed that's what the offer letter referred to me as was a nurse contractor um, and it was an independent contractor consulting agreement so this job was COVID related it was part of a the team I was on was part of a workers compensation team so this was an agency that contracted with a company who was performing screening and triaging for their employees. So this was nursing in a workers comp setting. Now, I was not a part of the workers comp team. I don't have workers comp experience, but the team I was on was sort of like a branch of that workers compensation team. And we were like, the public health sector I don't know I'm thinking that most of the team was made up of contractors because obviously COVID wasn't a thing um, until it, it came around in the pandemic so I believe a lot of the nurses on this team were contractual in a sense so this job started off as one where we were nurses that called employees who tested positive for COVID and we did a, um, an assessment. So um, learning when they started to have symptoms, what symptoms they were specifically, who they had been around um, before they started to get sick, where they think they got COVID from, um, getting all of this background information to understand the source of transmission but then the other piece of that was doing a in-house or an um, contact investigation specifically within the worker setting. So understanding what department they have, they may have worked in during their infectious period, um, learning who they spoke with, had been around within a less than a six foot distance, um, what activities they were doing, um, if they were visiting from their main department and going to another department, just kind of getting an idea of where they moved and how they moved to determine then how to and who to isolate and so forth, right? So this was a company that had a lot of different facilities and a lot of different stores across the United States. And, um, so we stayed busy. It was a pretty large team with a number of contractors and I think it was a very unique job. It was a pretty cool experience. I would say it was one of the best jobs because, you know, there's not much to performing a contact investigation, 
um, and educating people on um, COVID, especially if you do have some background already in um, like public health. So that's my background. I have worked as a public health nurse for a period of time and I worked like with TB patients. And so part of tuberculosis patients, part of treating tuberculosis is also understanding where they got it and who they also might have um, been in contact with and then performing screening and testing and so forth. So that was a very cool experience. That job was paying me $50 an hour. Okay, that was like so good to me. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed it, um, especially not being a full-time employee and as a contractor. It was from that experience where I was like, if I could continue to do jobs like this, maybe not specifically COVID related, but to really continue to contract, um, that way I could have the flexibility to learn other things and um, add on to my skill set to continue to use my nursing degree or nursing license in a different way. Or, you know, if even if I decided I didn't want to do nursing anymore, um, I just was like, I really want to continue to do stuff like this. So, um, outside of the, the job, I wanted to talk about how this job became informatics related. So it became informatics related when I started to operate as the sort of the public health liaison. So my title was still nurse contractor, um, kind of actually public health nurse. And so my role became, I became the person who needed to report um, the positive cases, the positive COVID cases for stores um, to the local public health um, entities or the local public health departments. For example, if this was a store or a facility that was located in Mississippi, then I would, and then I would need to know what, um, you know, what city or what local jurisdiction this store was in. And if they had a number of 10 cases that constituted an outbreak, depending on what Mississippi defined the COVID outbreak is um, for their area, then we would be required to report that to the local public health department. Now, in order for me to know what was happening and who was testing positive and if there was an outbreak, all the data that the nurses were entering into the system, I then was shown how to go in on the back end and pull the reports. So once I pulled the reports, the system generated a report and then it extracted it into a Microsoft Excel um, sheet. And so that sheet had different columns and information based on whatever was entered by the nurse. So we'd be able to see the first name and the last name, um, what store they worked for, um, just different variables, including when their COVID test was, if they tested positive or negative, the symptoms they were having, et cetera, et cetera. And so, of course, that's, that information didn't always come out clean because maybe a nurse documented something in the wrong space or the way that the nurse documented wasn't very clear. Or maybe whatever they typed didn't add up or didn't make sense. So I then have to sort of clean that data. Not only did I have to clean it to make sure that I understood the trends, or, or um, so that I would know what to report to um, those that need to know, I would have to organize the data and delete all the extra information that the local public health departments didn't need to know. The local public health departments needed specific information in order to then analyze data on a bigger scale in um, from their perspective. So I'd have to clean that data and then put it into a report and send it to that local public health department within Mississippi. So I was doing this for several states and um, I really loved it. It was a little bit monotonous, but the good part here was that I also did call patients and speak to patients. So though all of this work was done remotely and from home, um, there was still a little bit of variation in it. So I really liked it and it actually opened up my eyes to Power BI because I realized 
and this was later on this was something they developed months into while I was doing this but they then developed a dashboard and what the dashboard was was just a visual a visualization of all the data and so instead of pulling their reports organizing it and you know creating the mini charts within Excel to see what was going on now the dashboard in a bigger sense gave us this bigger picture of what was going on across all the states which states had the highest number of cases within a specific time period and just a lot of different variables and I was like that is so cool they ended up calling the person that was responsible to for building the dashboard or maybe overseeing the dashboard I don't know but when we wanted to see a change in what was measured or we wanted to add something additional that we also wanted to be tracked um, the director then would talk to the person to have this adjusted and so I was like um, data analyzation pretty much if anybody even benefited from my talking about random things please leave a comment let me know your thoughts um, if you appreciated it tell me what you appreciated about this video and if you want to see some of my other videos I talk about jobs that I interviewed for during my process of figure out where to go after recently graduating with a master's of sciences in health sciences with a concentration in informatics so yeah that's what I talk about on this channel do not hesitate to subscribe uh, reach out to me if I can help with anything right now I help nurses organize their resume to look more marketable for jobs like this within the healthcare informatics sector because this is how I've been adjusting my resume for a period of time over a long period of time being someone that has more had nursing experience within an outpatient setting versus within a hospital setting so I'm done now okay bye